Welcome to this episode of Mainline Connect. I'm Jennifer Lynn Robinson, and I'd like to welcome my guest today, Gregory Sider, mm -hmm. the Director of Marketing Communications, and Sarah Hopkins, and her title is the Man and Woman of the Year Manager, both from the Eastern Pennsylvania chapter of the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming today. So we like to start off the show talking about some networking topics, mm -hmm. and you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you about was visibility and branding mm -hmm. and marketing for LLS. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's a lot of great causes out there mm -hmm. and especially great cancer-related causes um, that are even in this Eastern mm -hmm. Pennsylvania area. So how do you guys network to kind of distinguish yourself from some of these other great causes out there and have people kind of focus on LLS? Well, first off, I think our story is very important. Our mission is very simple. It's to have a world without blood cancer and provide patient access to our um, patients. We invest in innovative cancer research and folks will say, why should I support a national organization versus local? And it's very easy. We are a $5.5 million chapter. That is how much we raise every year that money is then sent to our national office in White Plains, New York. Throughout the year, we distribute grants throughout the world, and last year was $68 million. Wow. The interesting part is $10.1 million is right here in Philadelphia. University of Penn, Fox Chase, Temple University, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. So here we are investing $68 million worldwide and 10 million of that is coming back here to the Philadelphia region. That's a big percentage. It's yeah. a huge percentage. And it has nothing to do with how much we fundraise or not. I mean, it is church and state. Um, our national capital chapter is our largest with $14 million and they have one grant that's a quarter of a million dollars. So it has nothing to do with it. We're so fortunate because Philadelphia is a medical community. Right. So I think that story right there really sets us apart. Mm -hmm. Networking is networking. It doesn't matter if you are a nonprofit. It doesn't matter if you're a for-profit. Pretty much we are a business. Right. Our job is to raise funds. Our shareholders are our donors, our volunteers, and our patients. That's who we answer to. Sure. So it doesn't matter what type of industry. It's really that FaceTime, getting in front of that person. I always say, and you know this as well, you can do as much marketing as you want. Commercials, public service announcements, mm -hmm. billboards. It's really that face-to-face -face time that really goes a long way. Great. I think too the um, one of the things that important about networking for nonprofit professionals is you just don't know who is going to connect with your mission and your story. So you, if you don't meet a lot of different types of people, you might miss an opportunity to meet the right donor or some a volunteer mm -hmm. who might be empowered by your mission. So in my mind, the more networking as nonprofit professionals we can do, mm -hmm. the better off our more message we can get out there to the public. That makes sense. So tell me about the mission of LLS for those who may not know about it. Um, the Leukemia Lymphoma Society is the largest volunteer health organization dedicated to finding a cure to blood cancer. In addition, we have a, one of our core points to our mission is to for patients to have access to treatment as well as information when they're newly diagnosed. So we have an information uh, resource line that's very integral to our mission to help people find clinical trials, to help them find physicians, and to help give them information when they're recently diagnosed as well. And then the research is also an important, obviously, initiative of ours as well. So it's really about supporting the patients and then fundamentally saving their lives. Okay, great. And so you head up the Man and Woman of the Year campaign. Correct. Right. So yeah. tell us what that is. The Man Woman of the Year campaign is a very unusual and a very exciting campaign. Um, we have a lot of core different campaigns in the Eastern Pennsylvania chapter for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. It includes the Red and White Ball, the Light, Light the Night, which is our walk, mm -hmm. uh, team and training, and student series, as well as Man Woman. Man Woman of the Year is a 10-week fundraising campaign that happens in 80 markets in the United States. 
and during the 10 weeks, which this year for the Philadelphia market launches on March 29th mm -hmm. and it ends on June 10th and every dollar raised during that time period by our candidates counts as a vote and whoever has the most votes at the end is anointed the man and woman of the year. And obviously networking is an essential part um, sure. as well as passion for our mission as well as a uh, large network of people, uh, dynamic personalities, um, different types of people. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be necessarily corporate, but you just have to be really passionate about yourself. And we are excited that you have agreed to be one yes. of our candidates as a per, as one of the best yeah. professional networkers yes. in the area. So I am so excited as we're well. We're deeply excited to have you on board. Um, but I think uh, the man and woman is a, it's a life-changing experience. Mm -hmm. um, during the campaign, you have a, champ, a chance to meet uh, two of our local champions, the boy and girl of the year, and they help us stay motivated and realize why we're doing this um, but it's a wonderful opportunity to instill passion and philanthropy in your business um, as well as feel good about something a little bit bigger than mm. yourself absolutely and you mentioned the student of the year campaign as well so is that sort of a parallel campaign to man and woman of the year except at a younger age Correct. demographic yep. okay. um, actually we're currently in the campaign it's seven weeks it's okay. for high school students typically sophomore and juniors and right now we're in the middle of our campaign it ends in a couple of weeks and this year we have nine candidates um, and they all same thing buy for the title as well as they win a um, scholarship at the end oh, whoever raises great. the most funds but we're very excited uh, the nine students this year are very passionate they're from all over the Philadelphia area and um, we're excited about them mm -hmm. they're very inspiring um, our Student of the Year last year, Mark Rogers raised over sixty thousand dollars. Wow, so it's pretty that is amazing. Super impressive. Yeah, yeah, it's a really yeah. amazing thing to yeah. meet passionate young people about philanthropy. So it's exciting. So what about some of the other things you mentioned? You mentioned uh, the night for. The Light the Night. Correct. Right? And and so tell us about that. The Light the Night is a walk here in um, the greater Philadelphia area. I don't mm -hmm. know, do you want to explain the Light the Night walk a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. Light the Night is held in over 200 communities in the United States. And it is a night of honoring those that lost their lives to blood cancer. Mm -hmm. It's also a celebration of those that are survivors. And it's also a night to remember. It really is different. It sets apart from any other walk um, for the fact that it is held at night versus most w walks or during the day. Right. And we, there's no fundraising minimum, but we do encourage our participants to fundraise. If you raise $100 or more, you become a champion for cures. And that entitles you to a wristband that provides a t-shirt um, as well as food for the night of the event as well as a lantern. So the white is for survivor, mm -hmm. gold is in memory of, and red is in supporter of. Okay. So when we begin the two mile walk, um, we light up the night. And it really is a magical night. It really is powerful. We have four walks here in Eastern Pennsylvania. Our largest is in Greater Philadelphia. We do have one here on the main line in Wayne at Wilson Farm Park. Okay. And it really is just amazing to see the community rallying behind our mission. Um, corporations, event. friends and family teams, retail partners. It, it just is a magical night with the lanterns and it, it's very powerful. The average participant raises $240, um, which is amazing. Yeah, that's great. And so you also have something coming up called the Big Climb, right? Yes. And so tell us about that. <laughs> it's our inaugural event here. Mm -hmm. um, it's on April 28th, correct? Um, April 23rd. I'm sorry, April 23rd. <laughs> um, and it is, uh, it's an opportunity for teams and participants to climb the steps within the Comcast Center, okay. which is the tallest building here in Philadelphia. How many flights is that, or you don't know? <laughs> it is 43 flights. Oh, wow. Um, it, it really is a remarkable story because um, Duncan Glue, who's, who's our mission honoree, he is um, a freshman at high school and he is being treated for cancer. Okay. His family um, and himself were originally from Seattle, Washington, and the family wasn't happy with his treatment, mm -hmm. that they moved full time here in Philadelphia and he's going to finish up his treatment next month and the family was very involved with the big climb out in seattle seattle's been doing this event for 30 years 
raising $5 million. Mm -hmm. And they had one of the top fundraising teams. And it was Duncan's mission to bring Big Climb to Philly. Okay. It's exciting. Yeah. It's all because of him, this young man. He is remarkable. The family's remarkable. Um, you know, it, it's getting back to even similar to what we were saying about Soon of the Year, that you have these young um, ad adults, teenagers, and what they can accomplish. It's very well, remarkable. Well, how they're utilizing their networks and markets differently than adults do. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things. You know, they can inspire their student friends or friends in either a faith group or mm -hmm. something like that or a service group. But they also inspire the adults mm -hmm. to go into their network and yeah. fundraise as well. So it's an interesting, it's a different way um, and it's a different message. Mm -hmm. As we all know, young people are, you know, they just have a different way of saying right. things and they have a different passion. So it's an yeah. exciting thing for us to be able to work with the glues um, and we're really excited to be have the chance to climb the steps at the Comcast Center. Mm -hmm. um, Are you both climbing the steps? Um, <laughs> no. I'm, try, I'm trying to get out but of it. But it's not hard. I've heard a lot of good things. It only mm -hmm. takes about 20 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and they do them in waves. So okay. it's mm -hmm. not sort of this, you know, it's not crowded. It's mm -hmm. There's waves. And um, when you get to the top, you get to be in Ralph's Cafe, which is a beautiful view of the city. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the end, you take the you take the elevator down. Okay. So you don't have to worry about your quads mm -hmm. on the way down. So and okay. it's, very it's supposed to be exciting. And it's very similar to Light the Night, that it's all different walks of life. Um, it's going to be corporate teams. It's going to be friends and family teams. You can be 12 years and older and participate in the inaugural Big Climb Philly. Right. Which is pretty exciting. The fundraising minimum is $109.23 um, for the amount of flights of stairs that you'll be climbing. No, number of steps. steps. Number of steps. steps. Sorry. Okay. okay. <laughs> but no, it's going to be exciting. Um, and we also have the red and white ball coming up, which yes. is a wonderful black tie event um, mm -hmm. coming up on the 12th of March. Yep. Um, and we're having it at the Marriott this year. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sponsored by Mercedes Benz and yep. Global Traveler. So we're yep. excited to work with all of them too. So wonderful. Our spring is always a, a big time of the year for us. So yeah. we're excited. A lot of great events coming up. So I want to get back into kind of the marketing networking mm -hmm. um, a little bit. And Greg, I know that you have a background in fashion and branding. Mm -hmm. um, how does that kind of play a role in what you're doing now with LLS? You know, my experience has been in luxury retail. And I think it helped for the fact that, yes, it's very different, um, but it's very similar. It is the customer service right. um, with the volunteers, as well as the sponsors, as well as the donors. And really listening to them, listening to their suggestions, listening to their feedback, but also working with them. You know, the Red and White Ball is a great example. You know, we have corporate sponsorships mm -hmm. and we will tailor them to their marketing needs. So it's not just a basic um, sponsorship packet that we're willing to um, work with them for their needs. You know, there is one of our sponsors that is not in base in Philadelphia, so we're not giving them 10 tickets to the event, we're giving them some added marketing benefits. I think that's really important in this day and age. There's mm -hmm. so many corporate sponsors that want to help a great cause, but they also want it to be kind of a mutually beneficial relationship. And some of the sort of outdated sponsor packages don't really work. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you can sit down with people and say, mm -hmm. how can we make this work together yeah. um, and tailor it individually yeah. you know, to the company, I think yeah. is a really great thing. Well, you yeah. know what? When I worked in my previous life in luxury retail, mm -hmm. we had a motto, and that motto is very similar. It's customer, client, friend, ambassador. And that's what we're looking at Leukemia Lymphoma Society. We want to have someone that is going to be our ambassador, that when we're not out in the field, they're gonna be talking about us. They're gonna be talking to their friends. They're gonna say, hey, purchase that ticket to win that Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 formatic SUV or start that team with us for the big climb, or walk with me at the Greater Philadelphia Light the Night Walk. 
or run for man woman. Right. There's tons, tons <laughs> of ways to get involved. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think too about um, branding. I think one of the things that we like to think about with nonprofit mm -hmm. is that we want people to feel good about what our message is. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, at Leukemia Lymphoma Society, we're you know we're saving lives and we're helping develop strategies and drugs and research clinical trials and things like that to help save people's lives. And we want people to feel good about that message mm -hmm. and that there's better treatments and there's better research and you know people are surviving at a better rate. So yeah. for them to feel good about our brand mm -hmm. as a national nonprofit um, and to feel good that we are a good ambassador of their funds, you know they're mm -hmm. allowing us to do these good things. So mm -hmm. I think it's a reciprocal relationship in that sense and that we want the right people talking about us. So we want to be a good mm -hmm. charity and we want them to be a good donor and an ambassador for us, so I think it's important. Yeah. What's interesting about LLS is they really do a great job with marketing. We have these signature fundraising campaigns, whether it's Like the Night, Team of Training, Man Woman, Student Series, and they're all appealing to different demographics. Clearly, Student right. Series is children, whether they're in preschool or all the or in high school. Um, Team and training, it's those that have run a half marathon mm -hmm. or those who have dreamed about doing a half marathon. Uh, man, woman, it is someone who is more, I don't want to say corporate, but a professional, no matter what walk of life they are in their career, whether they are entry level or the CEO. And then, of course, like the night, it's friends and family teams and it's corporate teams. You know, it's, it's, it's all different demographics that we are targeting. We're not just focusing on one niche. There's right. something for everybody. So what about social media? Like I would think with something like the Big Climb or the student campaign, mm -hmm. that probably plays a bigger role maybe than some other types of networking just mm -hmm. because it is a younger demographic and students and millennials. But how, how do you feel like social media plays a role in kind of marketing LLS? You know what, social media plays a very important role. I think everybody knows that nowadays. If, you don't, if you're not on social media, you're not networking. Right. And we launched the Big Climb Philly um, on October 23rd, six months prior to the actual event. And we did it with a soft announcement, a, a soft launch, if mm -hmm. you will. And that was done through social media and email communications. And now that we're closer to the event, we are now ramping up our marketing efforts with our um, media partnerships with NBC 10 as well as Philadelphia Magazine. And we are now going big, um, but the participants that we had registered up until now has been through social media mm -hmm. or as well as email communications or even with our community partners. Um, Core Fitness is one of our media par or one of our community partners for the Big Climb Philly. And we have, you know, been doing um, informational meetings, you know, come and climb the stairs of the Philadelphia right. Art Museum, get ready for the big climb, let us train you. And if you haven't registered yet, come out, do a free class with us, but learn more about the big climb Philly. Right. And more about LLS in general. Exactly. Yeah. I think social media for um, the campaigns in general across the board for any of our campaigns has a powerful way to communicate what we're doing in terms of our mission mm -hmm. as well as the passion mm -hmm. of our volunteers. So um, I think if you're starting a team for something, um, you know, explaining your mission and having an opportunity, if you're doing it in honor mm -hmm. of someone, to be able to feature some photos of that person sure. or be able mm -hmm. to tell that story in a very passionate way or mm -hmm. in, you know, video is a powerful thing as we know, as mm -hmm. well as photos. So I think it's a social media can be a powerful tool to inspire others um, in a lot of different ways. So yeah. I think for us, social media mm -hmm can be a good catalyst mm -hmm. to communicating the mission or what your passion is or you know what your overall mission is in terms of why you're volunteering for us. And our national office, they know that social media is important. A good example is Light the Night. Mm -hmm. You know, they provide a social media toolkit on their website. Okay. That will That's great. provide images, um, whether it's your profile pic or if it's your um, the web banner. The web banner. Right. Um, cover photos. They will cover photos. They will provide tips. Um, I do it even with our campaigns locally that, you know, man, woman, 
you will we provide a PR toolkit and that okay. includes social media right um, tips that we are recommending you do so we know social media is important both nationally as well as the local level and we are providing our volunteers with the tools that they need to be successful in their fundraising efforts. Yeah, I would think even with something like the Big Climb, this will be the first time you do it, mm -hmm. you know, things like uh, Periscope and Instagram, mm -hmm. um, Vine videos, like mm -hmm. that'll be something that's really important to kind of build momentum for future years for something like the Big Climb. And I would think with the younger demographic, people will be very into mm -hmm. posting those kinds of things yep. with fun hashtags. And yep. I can see that really having a lot of momentum for, mm -hmm. for LLS. Also, yeah. I think taking some video the day of, because it's our yeah. inaugural, I think it'll be important for us to communicate what the experience is like. So I think it's a nice opportunity for us to document this year's event to be able to gain a little bit of momentum for our second event as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So the flip side is that I know is at the beginning of the interview you mentioned that you um, you love the face-to-face -face mm -hmm. and um, also the fact that it's really not different networking for a nonprofit than it is for a business. Mm -hmm. So talk about that in a little more detail, um, especially for people maybe who are getting off the ground with a smaller nonprofit. Mm -hmm. You know, I know a lot of people who think about starting a nonprofit or maybe they run a small nonprofit mm -hmm. that's not of the scale of something like an LLS and it's something maybe they do on the side mm -hmm. in addition to a full-time job or other responsibilities. What are some tips that you can give people for sort of networking and marketing a nonprofit that have worked for you guys? You know, it's very important to get out there. You know, I've said to folks that, you know, you need to get out there. You need to network, whether it is a happy hour or at some kind of event. You need to get out there because your donors, your volunteers, they're not going to be knocking on the door necessarily. You need to get out there and you need to meet them. And I have to say, like, we are all about when we meet somebody, do, sending a follow-up email, let's meet co for coffee, because you don't know where that's going to lead. They may not say, you know what, I can't do man, woman, but thanks, but guess what, I have somebody else that is interested in doing the campaign. Or they might say, you know what, man, woman, not very, not interested, but you know what, I want to learn more about Light the Night. Mm -hmm. How do I get involved? So that FaceTime is so important because you don't know where it's going to lead. You don't know who that person knows. So getting out there is very important. And I think it's very important for anybody, whether you're in nonprofit, whether you're in for profit, that you need to get out there at least two, three times a week and network. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, especially in this day and age, I think there are people that feel like they can sit behind a computer and just mm -hmm. rely on social media. Mm -hmm. And while it's a huge benefit to have, you know, social media, as we've talked about, mm -hmm. you know, you, you have to kind of go old school and go back to the face-to-face -face and yeah. really get out there, like you said. I mean, there's there's no substitute for it. No, Look, it, it's yeah. like my single girlfriend. She wants to know why she's single. You don't go out. Do right. you think the man <laughs> of your dreams is going to knock on your door with roses and and champagne and say let's get married no you got to get out there right no you're absolutely i think right. too for a smaller nonprofit i've worked for both larger and smaller and grassroots nonprofit mm -hmm. throughout my career and i think one of the things that a lot of people say who are starting out in the nonprofit industry is like, I don't have the money or I don't have the time. Right. And I think there's a lot of ways that you can get out there. Everybody has tickets to something. They don't mm -hmm. typically, you know, these companies, a lot of larger corporations purchase tables for mm -hmm. events. They don't have everybody, you know, they're not filled. Um, if you ask people, uh, often they'll say, oh, you want to go to that? And I say, yes, I'd really like to go. I'm trying to meet, you know, someone from a certain business and they're being honored. I'd like to go. And more often than not, it's a nice way for a company or someone who has you know a little bit of extra to mm -hmm. be able to share with a nonprofit so right. I think you have to ask mm -hmm. um, so I think asking is important and then mm -hmm. being there as well um, I also think uh, you just don't know where networking happens too right um, it could be mm -hmm. at the grocery store it could yes. be at the Wawa checkout line it mm -hmm. just you don't really know um, so I think sometimes you know while business card exchanges can be great um, you just don't know so I think um, you know being strategic about where you are mm -hmm. is important too so if you're trying to meet somebody in a particular type of field go going to an event or a social mm -hmm. engagement where we, you think that that type of you know individual or that constituency might be as important as well. No, that's absolutely important. Mm -hmm. And you know what you guys were saying earlier about being a brand ambassador mm -hmm. for LLS, I think that falls into a little bit what you were talking about. You know, even the times where you're not at these signature events, let's say that we we're talking about or marketing for them or mm -hmm. you know 
your daily jobs that you do at LLS, um, it's so important to be able to mm -hmm. represent you know, because you don't know who you're going to meet, you right. know, at the gym on a Saturday yeah. and you right. know, what they're going to be interested in. So exactly. that stuff is so well, important, I think. A, yeah. a great story is when I started at Leukemia and Lymphoma Society four and a half years ago, um, I had um, a, a, a salesman at one of the local dealerships, um, Audie Winwood, Mike Walsh, he reached out to me and he said, oh, I know that you had such and such meeting with my showroom manager. Um, that you work for Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. My brother's a survivor. And my sister, who's a senior in high school, she is selling cupcakes. She wants to be a baker. Mm -hmm. um, she's selling cupcakes. And the money that she fundraised, she would like to donate, to donate it to Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. So I have a meeting with the, daughter, with the sister and, and, and Michael. And very excited that she's going to be donating this money and you know what a great story that she wants to do it for her brother and I said to Michael I said you know how about you being a candidate for man woman because her selling her cupcakes can go to your campaign so he agreed okay and he got his company behind him his dealership Audie Winwood and you know the rest is history so yeah. it's just that reaching out you don't know what's going to lead to that yes she sold her cupcakes we had about two thousand dollars that went towards LLS, but then we got Audie Winwood involved at mm -hmm. a higher level, and he fundraised. So it's all about networking and brainstorming and presenting what else there is. So we only have a few minutes left. I want to make sure that people know what you guys are looking for as far as volunteer mm -hmm. needs and also how to reach out to mm -hmm. LLS. Um, so please, yeah. you know, either one of you who want to tell our viewers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There are many ways that you can become involved with Leukemia Lymphoma Society whether it is volunteering in the office or participating in one of our signature fundraising events, whether it's Light the Night, Man Woman, Team and Training, Big Climb Philly, Red and White Ball, we're always looking for volunteers. And you can go to our website at www.lls.org backslash EPA or call the Eastern Pennsylvania chapter at 610-238-0360. Again, we're always looking for volunteers. We're always looking for participants. We're always looking for people to get involved. We are a voluntary organization, and that's what we need is the volunteers. We need people like you. Wonderful. And the biggest signature event that you have coming up soon is the Red and White Ball, which will be March 12th, which yep. you mentioned. And Mar March 12th yeah. at the Philadelphia Marriott Downtown Hotel. It has become one of Philadelphia's premier fundraising galas. It's a great um, event. It's, yeah. You were there last year. This is our third annual year. Um, we are closing in at raising $600,000. Our first year we raised $362,000. It's one of our fastest growing um, fundraising events here in Eastern Pennsylvania. And if you can't participate, you know, purchase a raffle ticket mm -hmm. to win the all-new Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 formatic SUV. Only 2,000 <laughs> raffle tickets will be sold at $100 a raffle ticket. And for more information about that, visit www.redwhiteballphilly.org backslash raffle. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here and educating everybody on what you do and also just about networking and marketing in mm -hmm. general. I think a lot of useful information mm -hmm. here, um, both for for-profits and for nonprofits. So thank you so yeah. much for being here. Perfect. We're yeah. excited to work with you. <laughs> Congratulations excited. on your nomination. Thank you so and much. And we wish you the best of luck. And we ask everybody who watches to support Jennifer Lynn Robinson, yeah. our greatest, <laughs> awesomest networking professional candidate for the 2016 Men Woman of the Year campaign. Thank you. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.